Well, coming up on show 444, VW to build their own Giga factories. Porsche in Japan wants to build their own charging network. And Dubai police go electric. Those stories and many more coming up on today's podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening around the world, welcome to the show, EV News Daily, Monday 15th of April. My name is Martin Lee, and I've been through every EV story that I can find today and picked out the best ones to save you time. The ultimate time saver is the team that help brings you this show. MyEV.com is the world's first marketplace, but it's built specifically from the ground up. Probably this time last year, before they went public with it, uh, they were thinking... How can we make a marketplace only for EV buyers and sellers? See, I'm going to wade through all the old rubbish to get to the good stuff you want. Hello to a new Patreon producer, you, Martin, Martin Horner, signed up on Patreon at the producer level. Thank you so much. We'll start with VW. Volkswagen's pushing its joint venture partners like SK Innovation to build electric car battery plants, which have at least one gigawatt manufacturing capacity. Chief Executive Herbert Dees told Reuters today in the report, Volkswagen will buy by 50 billion euros worth of battery cells. That's about $56 billion worth of battery cells for their EV cars and has identified the South Korean company SKI, also LG Chem and Samsung SDI as their strategic battery cell suppliers as well as China's CATL and they want to have gigafactories popping up. Uh, their battery partners, they want them to build factories that have got at least one gigawatt uh, of manufacturing capacity capacity that is what uh, qualifies any battery factory to be called a gigafactory Moving on to Porsche, and Porsche in Japan have chosen their partner to build out Chadamo chargers for their new Taycan sports car. ABB has been announced as the selected partner by Porsche in Japan for a joint development project of next-gen EV chargers for the Japanese market, says InsideEVs.com today. According to the press release, the two are going to develop a dedicated high-power charger with power output exceeding 150 kilowatts. No word on this being anything super super high voltage though because of course we're talking Chadamo. Well from the press release ABB has entered into an agreement to deliver its market leading electric vehicle infrastructure for Porsche's Japan Japanese EVs including the Taycan, the automaker's first fully electric car which will be on sale in the country in 2020. Under the terms of the deal, Porsche in Japan will install ABB's high power chargers at Porsche centers, otherwise known as dealerships, and public facilities across the country, creating a network of fast chargers for its electric vehicles. The first installation will go live this time, around this time next year. They say mid 2020, so maybe just a little more than a year away. And of course, in Japan, the charging network is Chadamo or Chademo, however you want to say it. So here in Europe, CC. Yes, is pretty popular, but of course, Chadamo is right up there as well. Very, very popular uh, around the world. Nothing on China's choice of plug, the GBT socket. What with it being China, there's a bazillion of those. I could have looked up the actual number, uh, but that's the most popular charging plug in the world. Then it's Chadamo, uh, then CCS, and then Tesla's proprietary plug. Uh, if you want to read more, I'll put a link to Inside EVs in the show notes for you. Let's talk about a new Audi, the Volkswagen ID Rooms, which I told you about yesterday on the show, isn't the only new fully electric concept car coming from the group, Volkswagen Group, at the Auto Shanghai Show this year in China. Audi is at the event to showcase their new concept, which is AIME. Do I pronounce it AIM? AIME or AIME? AI, Artificial Intelligence, ME as in for me, uh, standing out at uh, a futuristic shape and style. It's uh, like a, an A2 sort of, like an Audi A2 size. And the new show car carrying uh, the four rings on the front of it takes the shape of the current compact zero emissions hatchback uh, developed primarily for city use. Uh, you know, like the VW ID platform. So it's taken that, says Adrian Padano for Motor1.com. The equivalent production version when it goes on sale is they think the use case for a small city car like this doing between 12 and 43 miles an hour. That's 20 to 70 kilometres an hour over short distances. So with that in mind, the 
aimy, the aimy, the the aim uh, was conceived with a simple hardware configuration with a 65 kilowatt hour battery pack for city use. The actual range isn't specified, and like I said to you on the show yesterday, it's a concept car. So design style wise, it's very futuristic. None of the paraphernalia that you have to have on cars, which designers hate, wing mirrors door handles, things like that. It's proper concept car territory. This rear suicide doors, no B pillar, uh, intricate LED headlights and tail lights just for the sake of having intricate LEDs because it's a concept car. Real plants inside the minimalistic cabin, uh, they say is the first in an automobile, according to Audi. Not that it comes as a big surprise, but the the a, a, I'm, the I'm, I'm, Uh, has been envisioned with a highly advanced autonomous driving system doing level 4 technology. And of course you can say that. It's a concept car. I could say that I'm going to unveil a concept car with level 5 autonomy. In fact, level 6. I've invented level 6 just now. Uh, This is where you get in the car and it just reads your mind about where you want to go. You haven't even got to push a button and it will take you there. I will invent level 7 tomorrow. There's only level five. There's only five levels, by the way, in case uh, that d- terrible uh, joke was lost on you. It, it wasn't funny, by the way. Uh, police in Dubai are going green with their new eco-friendly fleet of electric petrol cars, uh, patrol cars, rather. <laughs> That's a bit of a slip to make, isn't it? I could edit it out, but you know that <laughs> this is all in one take. Uh, their new eco-friendly fleet of electric patrol cars to support the Emirates sustainability drive. Dubai police officers are going to be getting behind the wheel of 13 Renault Zoe electric cars. I know them well. I drive one. Uh, They have been sold them by Arabian Automobiles, according to the national.ae website. I found this today. Dubai police, not the only state service helping to protect the planet. In February, the Dubai Corporation of Ambulance Services unveiled their new vehicle, the Zero DS, uh, producing no vibration or fumes, very little heat. The ambulance service said the emergency vehicle would be used for rapid intervention and immediate response situations. It's great that they are going to be taking 13 Renault Zoes into the police force there in Dubai. I would just say, don't use them for high-speed chasing. I mean, look, I love the car I drive, but, you know, not to 60 in about... Oh, whenever it feels like it. Seconds. It it's not a performance car. This is this'll be good for, you know, poodling around town, doing your jobs, doing your errands if you are Mr. Dubai policeman or police woman. Uh we, we won't be, f- you know, for a hot pursuit. Let's talk about Tesla delivering the $35,000 Model 3. They've only gone and done it. Many people thought the day would never happen when they would even announce the $35,000 Model 3, let alone, when they did announce it, actually shipping them to people. But there's a twist in the tale, as always. It's Tesla. It can never be too simple. Uh, Tesla started deliveries of the long-promised Model 3. Some customers have indeed paid $35,000, and they are getting a Model 3 for that take off any incentives that are applicable to them. The delivery of the vehicle will be short-lived, though, says Fred at Electric today. After Tesla announced it's moving away from the $35,000 Model 3 last week, the automaker confirmed it would start deliveries this weekend. But what the cars are, actually, is they are standard range plus cars, and they are battery locked to a lower level. So several buyers have reached out to Electric, to confirm that they have now taken delivery of their standard range Model 3, which is in fact a standard range plus Model 3, but the battery is locked down. The vehicle is pretty much identical to the standard range plus. If you paid your $35,000, you've actually got a slightly better car because you get all the bits that come with the standard range plus, the partial premium interior. The uh, Tesla standard range cars, if you want to call them that, have been software locked though. The battery pack is at 90% of capacity. It's disabled features like the onboard music streaming, the navigation with live traffic, the heated seats. Although the thing is though, if you get a, a, ba- a bigger battery that is then software locked to 90%, you can of course charge it all the way to 100, which is not actual 100, but it's the 100 that you see on the screen, and it will charge quicker to 100 because it's not really going to 100. And of course, in the future, I'm sure Tesla will happily take some money out of your pocket to then upgrade that battery pack to its actual sized software unlock it. Uh, So if you know anyone who's got their $35,000 Model 3, 
congratulate them. They got a fabulous car for the $35,000, as promised. The cars, of course, no longer on the website. There are now only three cars, for the Model 3 at least, to order. It's the Standard Range Plus, and then the Dual Motor car, and the Performance car. It's super simple now to order a Model 3, because you have got a choice of, of too much, just three to pick from. And of course, if you go Performance, then you get all the other performancey bits thrown in as well. Oh, and I should add, by the way, uh, we mentioned this when the news was first announced, but always worth another mention. If you do go onto the configurator now and have a look at a Tesla Model 3, the price that you see now includes, let me get this right, autopilot. They're calling it autopilot. So the price you see, autopilot's bundled in. It is the full self-driving, which you then pay an extra five thousand dollars for and that gives you oh, i haven't got the website open in front of me so i'm doing this from the top of my mind and i'm no tesla fanboy but i think that gives you summon it gives you auto park it gives you nav on autopilot which is things like lane change without you having to initiate the move i'm sure somebody will correct me if i've got that wrong i'm a tesla expert let's talk about pure electric vehicles entering a golden phase at the moment. A series of new reports from ID Tech X Research says the electric vehicles that are on sale now have officially entered the fastest phase of growth ever. While good news, it's not too unexpected. Rapid improvements in technology have really expanded the electric vehicle market, this report says. Battery costs have dropped whilst their range and efficiency have increased. At the same time, governments around the world are embracing policies that emphasize zero carbon emissions uh, transport. One of the studies by the independent market research company examines the rise of electric buses around the globe. I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes if you want to read more because i could go super deep on this but i won't a couple more stories elon musk says tesla is vastly ahead of anyone else when it comes to self-driving well tesla is less than two years away less than two years away from full self-driving elon said in an interview over the weekend with the mit researcher lex fridman and he said tesla was far ahead of other companies working on self-driving technology according to ars technica today well musk told fridman that tesla customers would need to keep their hands on the wheel for at least six months or something like that that's the quote six months or something like that but he predicted that soon maybe even towards the end of this year i'd be shocked he says if it's not next year at the latest, Tesla's self-driving technology will become so good that having a human intervene will then decrease the safety factor. It's interesting because the bull argument for Tesla, those that want to see the company do really well, say that they, because they've got the biggest fleet of cars on the road, every Tesla sold, feeding back data to the neural network to build a better system. Whereas the bear argument says that Tesla didn't sell too many vehicles in Q1. They would say that it sold half as many S's and X's as they should have done. And so what they're doing is diverting the attention to something else, which is self-driving. So they're making, you know, Elon's tweeting about the camera last week that faces the cabin, talking about, you know, leasing came from nowhere. And many people think that the leasing announcement is because it's not the cheapest lease lease deal to do that the leasing announcement was more about the announcement that came with it which is they're not making the cars available for sale at the end of the lease they're taking the model threes back for the tesla network the fleet of ride hailing self-driving cars so the focus over the last couple of weeks has really been about their self-driving technology and so that's the counter argument uh, and of course it's always good to present both arguments and then give everybody all the facts and you can make your mind up you can probably guess i will always err on the side of the electric vehicle manufacturer whoever <laughs> that manufacturer is just because i'm such a big darn fan of evs Let's finish off with a very expensive EV. British car maker Lotus is set to pull the wraps off a £1 million plus pure electric hypercar at the Shanghai Motor Show today, says the Sunday Drive Sunday Times Driving website. The low-volume sports car is going to cost £1 million plus. It's pure electric, and it's going to sit at the very top of Lotus's family tree and go up against extreme supercars, the likes of Aston Martin and McLaren. The car would be fitted with an electric motor and battery technology developed in partnership with Williams F1 team's Advanced Engineering Division. 
and I'll pop a link in the show notes if you want to read more. Thank you very much to myv.com for setting our question of the week. Keep your answers coming in for this. Would you let your car be used when you're not driving it as part of a self-driving fleet or a ride-hailing service? Or is your car yours? Do you think of a car that can do that? Maybe it's not yours, but may, maybe just that you are the kind of keeper of it, like the guardian of it. Uh, or maybe you just don't mind. Let me know your thoughts. Would you let your car be used when you're not driving it as part of a self-driving fleet or a ride-hailing service? Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com. You can check out Facebook and the YouTube comments as well. Right, time for the Envy bit. There are 212 patrons of the show now. We add Martin's name as a producer on my Patreon page. Thank you so much. There are 443 previous shows online to listen to anytime you want to. But get the new ones by making sure that you hit subscribe in your podcast app. You know, I say subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, Subscriptions normally do cost. But I think you know with podcasts when I say subscribe. And YouTube has the subscribe button as well. You know it's not going to cost anything. Uh, So if you listen to this, maybe it's the first time you're listening. uh, Make sure you get it every single day automatically. Put the audio on YouTube and all the big podcast platforms as well. And it's a pleasure to have a little chat with you every day. Whatever you're doing, commuting, driving at the gym, walking the dog. Thank you for making me part of your day. Come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I will catch you tomorrow. And in the meantime, remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.